Hey look, it's our first level 3 problem here, and boy is it a tough one. Alright, suppose that while lying on a beach near the equator, watching the sun set over a calm ocean, you start a stopwatch just as the top of the sun disappears. You then stand, elevating your eyes by a height of 1.7 meters, and stop the watch when the top of the sun again disappears. If the elapsed time is 11.1 seconds, what is the radius of the Earth? This is a very tricky question, since at first it probably doesn't seem clear at all how we're supposed to get the, the radius of the Earth from this. But it, there is a way, and that's why I have this diagram here. This diagram doesn't actually come with the question itself. I just kind of have this because I figured... Well, with a question like this, you really want to draw it out. And I knew that my typical handwriting abilities with MS Paint wouldn't quite cut it, because with this problem, especially with the level 3 problem, it's really important that you really get what's going on here. And here, and here is what's going on here. So if you didn't understand what's happening from the question, this picture illustrates it quite well. So you're lying here at point A, where we're at the kind of the top of the world here where it's flat. Uh, and then once the sun disappears from where you are, once it goes below this line so you can't see it anymore, you go, you stand up. So that you're, you're now at a, your eyes are now at a height H. So that now you can see the sun once more until it's blocked again by the horizon before it passes through this horizon line and it disappears again. And that is what that time is measuring. So how are we going to find R? Well, if you notice, from the pink lines here on this diagram showing R, we can look at this as a right triangle, meaning we can use some trigonometry in order to find this. We can use some facts here to find out what R is from this perspective here. So let's try getting an equation for R, for the radius, using our Pythagorean theorem, because we do have enough variables to get something from Pythagorean's theorem using this. So what Pythagorean's theorem states, as you should know, is that the sum of the squares of the two legs of a right triangle should be the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So what that means is this, the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, which is going to be this whole vertical section right here that goes through the radius and the height at which you stand. So to, to do this uh, formula, which you might more commonly know as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, uh, we're going to use r squared plus d squared, and d is what we're calling your line of sight from the from when you're standing, uh, your, from your, the distance from your eyes to the horizon line where the sun disappears for the second time. So plus d squared is going to be equal to the hypotenuse, which is the radius plus your height. So um, r plus h, and a square over that whole thing. Which uh, I can rewrite this to, to isolate the r's a bit more clearly. We're going to use FOIL, which is a common algebra technique, to get these a bit separated. So that becomes R squared plus 2H, 2HR plus H squared. Now we've got a pretty good formula there. Or uh, because on both sides now, we've got an R squared that can cancel each other out. Our formula could be simplified as D squared is equal to 2RH plus h squared. All right. So what next? How does this help us? Well, I'm going to scroll down a little bit because the, although this still doesn't seem fully useful at the moment, we've still got a few more uh, a few more tricks up our sleeve we can use to try and get something. Let's try and find out what the angle is. So what this angle represents is the angle between uh, the radius of the position where we started lying down but between that and the radius of the horizon line of the point at the horizon line where we where our vision is blocked the second time so how are we going to find out what that is well we can set up a proportion here between the angle and the amount of time it took for us to get that far to that point because remember 
this uh, the angle at, that the radius is traveling through can be seen as a function of the time it took to get there. So if the angle is seen as based as the angle of the sun's move motion around a 360 degree motion around the earth and this angle is only a fraction of that then it's going to be the same fraction as the fraction of the amount of time it took for us to get there divided by the total amount of time it takes for the sun to ground the earth which is going to be 24 hours. So the ratio I'm going to set up here to get the angle is going to be theta over 360 degrees is equal to the time, or t, divided by 24 hours. Great. Now let's use a bit of algebra to solve for theta. Uh, so basically just multiply this fraction, that's t over 24 hours, by 360 degrees, and then just do a simple conversion from 24 hours to however many seconds are in 24 hours. Uh, we're at the point of conversions now where it's no longer really the point of the question. Now the question's much more challenging beyond that. So I'll leave those specific conversions up to you. But the, the end result, though, is that the angle, theta, is equal to, using that very simple algebra, we find that theta is equal to 0 0.04625. Degrees. All right, and but it's probably still not entirely clear at this point. How does this help us? How does how is this any useful to us at all? Well, let's try and set up a trigonometric function for theta, so uh, that relates that relates r the value we're trying to find here with uh, d a thing that we already have a function for up above. So because d is the opposite side and r is the adjacent side, we can try using tangent. And you should, this is, this is the part where you really have to know some trigonometry here. You need to know that the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, or uh, in this case, d over r. So what it would be is the d side over r side, or d divided by r, is equal to the tangent of theta. Or if we want to isolate it for just d specifically to more closely mirror what we have above, we can set that also as d is equal to r times tangent of theta. Or we can take this a step further and say and, and uh, turn it into convert it into d squared is equal to r squared times tangent squared of theta. And now that we've done this, now we can see, now that we have set it equal to d squared, now we have a parallel here between this term here and the term we have above. Now, I will make a little small approximation here, because although we have a plus h squared at the end, just to make, to make our calculations easier, and because we're looking for an, a rough approximation anyway, I am going to ignore the little h squared here. It still technically exists, but because it is so tiny compared to the radius of the Earth itself, it's worth leaving out for this case, for this little problem here, because we're really not going to actually need it there. But if we do take this uh, equation here, then we're, if we say that if we assume that d squared is going to be roughly equal to 2rh to the point where we're, gonna, where we're just going to make the approximation, then what we can use is we can put this, this uh, little equation and this equation with the trigonometry together so that we can say that 2rh is roughly equal to r squared times tangent squared of theta. And there's two. There's an r here and an r squared there. So let's take this r out and take out the square. And with a little bit of algebra, we can find that r would be equal to two h divided by tangent squared of theta. Now, uh, now here, here, here we go. We have it. We have our expression for. Uh, we have our expression for r here. So now sub in the h value, the height value, which is 1.7 meters. 
and the value in degrees we got for the angle. And in your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode and not radian mode. That's very important to get a proper angle, or proper reading. And the value we get for r, for the radius of the Earth, is 5.2 times 10 to the 6th power of meters. And that is our answer to this very tricky and complex problem.